One of the most important things a drummer must consider and work on in his playing in order to become a solid drummer is stick technique. Just like many activities in life, there are various techniques that can be utilized. So in a sense, there is no right or wrong type of technique per se. However, what all the good techniques you have in common are a few principles, and the purpose of this video is to go over these principles. The first thing I'm going to talk about is where to hold a drumstick. In order to know where to hold the drumstick first, however, you must first find the fulcrum. The fulcrum is the point at which the most natural bounce from the sticks can be achieved. It's usually about a third of the way down from the drumstick, so if you divide the drumsticks in threes, you want to take the first section, and at the very end of that section, that's generally where it's at. Now this is to consider to be the most balancing point of the drumstick. Balancing point, uh, contrary to what you may first think, is not in the middle. Because the dimensions of the drumstick, as you can see, the weight tapers towards the end here. So, again, it's going to be more towards this end, about a third of the way down. Now, you may ask, why should I find the fulcrum? Well, there's a few different reasons. and The first and main reason is it makes your drumming playing way easier. It makes it easier on you to play and obviously that's a good thing. Number two, it saves you energy and pain. Obviously no one wants to be in pain while they're playing so in order to you know eliminate that pain you have to find the fulcrum. And thirdly it makes achieving a more solid and consistent sound much easier as well. Now that we went over the fulcrum and where to hold the drumstick, now we got to go over how to hold a drumstick. Now there's many different techniques and the two main ones are match grip where your uh, hands are identical looking and then there's traditional grip. I'm basically just going to go over match grip and leave it at that and then go over the various match grip techniques as well. Um, but uh, I'll go over a traditional grip at a later time. For now, just match grip. Alright, so, uh, the first thing is we want, once we find the fulcrum, as I already discussed, we're going to match our index finger with our thumb. And that is actually going to rest directly on the fulcrum. So we want to match, again, our index finger with our thumb, like so. And this is going to be on the fulcrum point. So we're going to pinch at this point as well. Okay. Now the next step is to put your other fingers around the drumstick. And this is where we get into some controversy here. Like I, like I said in the previous part of the video, you know, there's various techniques, different opinions out there. This is where it gets somewhat controversial, but... Um, the few things I'm going to tell you after and just right now are going to help you tremendously if you give it a try. I highly recommend you give it a try if you haven't already. So, again, first thing, find the fulcrum, match index finger with your thumb, pinch it, then put your other fingers around the stick. Now, I highly recommend you don't leave much gap between your fingers. As a matter of fact, it's I believe it's best to try to close the gap. There many different schools out there in drumming agree with this philosophy and it's mainly due to the reason because the moment you have gaps between your fingers, the moment the stick kind of it, it lose control of it. And one of the biggest things you really want to achieve is maintaining control of the drumstick. So again, very important you do that. Okay, now you want also to think of the drumstick as an extension of your arm, okay? So, like what, you know, when your arm is at this angle, we want to think of it in extension as your forearm. So it should be straight and parallel with your forearm. Finally, when you turn your hand over, just to see how everything looks, it should either rest in the middle section of your hand or on this section of your hand. 
Either or is fine. That's, uh, again, the opinion varies out there depending on the school of drumming. Um, but as long as it's straight with your arm, that's the main thing. Finally, there's three different types of match grip which you can utilize in your plane. I don't advocate any particular grip over the other. I think they're all great grips. It depends on your style, the music you're playing, as well as the drums you're playing. First is known as German grip, also referred to as flat grip. This is where your hands are parallel to the ground. The next is American grip. This is where your hands are going to be at a slight angle in relation to the ground, usually about 45 degrees. And then lastly we have French grip. This is where our thumbs are on the top of the stick. This grip is very popular in, uh, for timpani drummers. They utilize this grip all the time. As well as drum set players, they use it as well. Now all of these grips are perfectly acceptable and when you play drum set, there's no right or wrong grip. I highly recommend that you try all of them and see which one you like the best. The final thing I'm going to talk about today is how to hit a drum. This applies in normal circumstances. Again, as I said previously, there's a lot of controversy out there as far as how to hit a drum goes and techniques and all that stuff. So when I say normal circumstances, what I'm talking about is drumming in which you're trying to play at a dynamic level that's generally mezzo piano to forte or fortissimo. So moderately soft to kind of loud. Right? So it's not going to apply to super incredibly loud drumming and it's not going to apply to super soft drumming but basically everything in between. The first thing you want to consider here and recognize is that you want to stay relaxed. This, this is incredibly important and you, it, it's way overlooked in a, a lot of drummers but it's so important and it's, I highly recommend you stay relaxed no matter how loud or how um, what type of music you're playing doesn't matter. You want to stay relaxed no matter what. And the reasons for this is because it allows for better control of what you're doing. It maximizes the bounce while you play and you're also will be playing with uh, you're going to be playing more smoothly and more accurately as a result of that. When you strike a drum, you want to utilize your wrist. This is where most of your power is going to come from while you're playing. Using your wrist preserves your energy and allows for a consistent and precise drumming sound overall. It also sustains your control of what you're doing while you're playing. Another part of your body you can utilize while you're playing are your fingers. However, I don't advocate that you rely on your fingers completely. Now, most drummers out there are going to have a combination of wrist movement and finger movement. That's generally um, the most popular way to play uh, in drum set. Um, now if you want to play with only the wrist, which is fine, then your fingers are going to be on the stick at all times and you're simply going to move your wrists up and down. Now if you want to use a combination, then your, your wrists are going to be mo moving but your fingers are also kind of guiding the stick and moving it as well. Now, personally, I don't believe that it's a good idea to allow the stick to go off your fingers. And the reason is very simple. Because once you do that, the stick kind of dangles around in your hand and that's when you lose control. And again, one of the main things you want to allow in your drumming and maintaining your drumming is uh, um, control. Obviously it's very important in order to achieve a solid and con consistent sound overall. I've told you what to utilize in your technique as far as what parts of the body work well in your when you strike the drum. Now 
I should tell you a few things and for as far as what not to use. And that is upper, upper portions of your arm, including the biceps and the triceps. You may see here and there in some videos guys playing drums like this. Well, <laughs> it's more for showmanship whenever you do see those. And that's the only, I would say, the only uh, time that's generally acceptable is when you're really trying to get the absolute most power you possibly can out of the drum. And even in those cases, you, you still don't really get a good sound because it, the drums aren't made to be hit that loud. And you're more than likely going to break a drum head or a cymbal. So not too many positive uh, reasons why you should play like that in the first place. But again, uh, overall, when you're playing from a moderately soft dynamic level to a decently loud level, you want to avoid the biceps and the triceps. Now, there's occasional um, instances where it's perfectly acceptable to use the lower part of the arm and just move it like this, especially if you want to do some accent stuff. Let's say you're playing a, a hi-hat beat and you want to add some more groove to it, you know? And then in that sort of situation, it's totally fine to kind of put some arm to it. It gets your body into it, you know? It just makes it more groovy that way. But again, we, what we want to avoid as drummers is playing with our biceps and our triceps. Final topic of this section involves how to allow the stick to bounce off the drum head. When you strike the drum in normal drumming situations, you want to allow it to bounce naturally. Think of it as bouncing a basketball. When you bounce a basketball, you throw it down to the ground and it automatically comes up. Likewise, with a drumstick, you do the same type of thing, and the only difference is, of course, is you're holding on to it the whole time. So, let's say I want to play at a fairly loud dynamic level. I would want to have the stick height about like this. And I'm basically throwing the stick down, and I'm not lifting the stick up at all. I'm actually allowing the head to do all the work, and it's bouncing back naturally. My initial hit on the way down comes from me. The power starts with me, um, but it's kind of like a whipping motion. I, I throw it down real quick as I'm staying relaxed. I'm not tensing up at all. Again, you got to stay relaxed no matter what you're doing and drumming. Uh, but I'm, th I'm throwing the stick down and I'm allowing it to strike or come back up. And that's going to give me that momentum, especially if I want to play at a faster tempo. I can get a lot of speed. And it's, again, it's all a matter of allowing the stick to bounce off the drum head. Don't work against the drum head, work with it. I hope that this video has helped you understand technique so that you can optimize your playing capabilities. Remember, technique is somewhat controversial. But if you keep the principles that I went over in mind and exploit them in your playing, I assure you that over time you will become a more solid and consistent sounding drummer.